Oh, good. Keshan, did you hear that? Thank you, Virginia. You're welcome, man. All the blessings to you. All right. <laughs> okay, let's go. Um, let's ask the Father for his blessing on this meeting tonight. Um. Before we do that, let me just ask people, let me ask family, partners, friends, please wherever you are in the world. Um, if you are watching by, uh, by Ustream TV and, um, and um, you have a special request, you can call in at 316 243-2967 if you have a special request tonight for us to pray about. Please, you can do that. You can call that number while we are on this television broadcast. Also, if you are on the telephone conference line and you have a special need, you can you can stop me as I'm ministering, as I, as I'm ministering and then share the button with us and then we will all pray. Um, whenever God gives me a revelation, I like to check it out with some seasoned teachers of the word to make sure that um, it's not just I alone that, that um, excuse me, let me put down something here, that it's not just I alone that has um, um, that revelation that some other person also uh, should have come in contact with the heavenlies and receive the same revelation so that it's not just I alone that is that is uh, teaching the same thing. So I have been looking at um, uh, certain things that has to do with the angelic realm. Um, this year, this year, I am going to um, as I said to all of you, I will be um, working very smart and very deep and in detail um, to bring into into existence that is to bring into a place of knowledge for you about the angelic world the world of angels and the world of demons remember what I remember what the Lord shared with me demons are not angels and angels are not demons and there are two kinds of angels they are angel that has fallen out of grace with god out of favor with god there is no um god will not accept um them back and they are angels that are faithful that are with god so i will stop there tonight tonight we are dealing with um, we have been dealing with, we've been, we've been ministering alongside, we've finished uh, ministering about the cherubims, and we've also finished ministering about the seraphims. Tonight, we are into the third class of angels, the ones that are called living creatures. Now, let me make it very known to you that... The living creatures we are talking about here are not the living creatures that Ezekiel saw, which he said when you read Ezekiel 1, and then I think Ezekiel 10 also, you'll find him saying that those living creatures that he saw were the cherubims, cherubims, now, let me explain something here for you to know. The seraphims reveals the glory. They are, they, 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 they carry with them revelation of glory, of God's glory. The cherubims carries with them the revelation of the response to the Spirit, to the Holy Ghost. 
So it makes sense. It makes sense that those that protect God must also be those that respond to the Spirit. I'm going to go back maybe next week to spend some time to call a meeting to explain the three categories of angels, the cherubims, the seraphims, and the living creatures. And what is the differences between them? I'm going to do that. So while the seraphims respond and reveals revelation about the glory of God, of the Most High, the cherubims reveal the revelation about the spirit in the heavenly realms. While the living creatures, they reveal high worship. They reveal God more in detail than we've seen before. That's where we are going with it. So tonight we are talking with the one that are called the Zoon or the Zoe's. That's what we are dealing with tonight. So let me find my little jottings about the living, the living creatures. Let's see where I have some writings about them. Let's go there. Um, there's a lot that you are going to learn this year about angels. But before we do that, I want everybody, please, when I say to you that you should take two seconds to pray, when one is two seconds, please be quiet so that we can go into other things because we are dealing with time here. There are people that will need to go to their work tomorrow morning, and I do not want to keep you here. God doesn't live in the church. So I'm against people who keep people in church seven days a week. Or you or you go to church on Sunday morning by, by 8 o'clock and you go home in the evening as though you don't have any other thing to do. Is to stay in the church. I'm against it. Just know it. I don't like that. Except the Holy Spirit is ministering like casting out devils, healing, raising the dead, and it is a, 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 and it is millions of people. And even if it's millions of people, I, I do not want to spend my entire day doing that. I want God to touch everybody at one time and deal with them. Those that he has slain and they are laying on the floor, let them be on the floor. I'll be on my way home. Whenever the Spirit releases them, then they can enter their car and drive and go home. I'm not going to stay there and wait for them because I have other business to do in life. So I'm against those that keep you in church. And if you don't show up, the pastor is against you or the prophet is against you. I'm against such people. Just let them know that. I'm very blunt. God has given me a combination of the spirit of Kenneth Hagen of blessed memory and Lester Summerall. In Lester Summerall, you find hard stuff. He will curse, he will curse your butt off. And whatever he says will come to pass. In Hagen, you have mercy. You have the pastoral. In the other one, you have the prophetic. And I have the two combination in my life. I don't know how to even handle myself sometimes. Like last night. All of you saw what happened last night. So this is where we are going with it. So please take two seconds and lift up your voice and begin to pray. This is why... This is the reason why prayer is important. Some of you, like Miss Girl and J. Truth, my mama and the rest of you, who followed my ministry, who followed Jesus with me, who followed the Father with me, you are all aware that I teach that angels also learn about God from us humans, from the saints. From the saints, us. There is no time that God Ask angels to come and sit together in a school and then he begins to tell them about himself. No. Angels learn from what they see. And most of the time they learn from us. Like last night, when the Holy Ghost power explosion was on last night, angels were learning from me and from you. 
from what God was doing. Angels learn. Angels are lifetime learners about God. And they learn from us. If you doubt what I'm saying, go and look at the teachings of great men of God. People like Benny Hinn. People like Kenneth Hagen, Derek Prince, all those kind of people. People who deal with the kind of things that I'm dealing with. But mine, the difference is going to be that in my generation, I am going to spend more extra time to, 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 to go through scripture, verse by verse. That's why I need your financial support so that I can sit me down in my office without going out there to be looking for money so that I can sit down while I'm working and looking at scriptures for, for, for new revelation that will open doors for you and then write them in books, produce them in stuff, put some on YouTube for you to enjoy and so on. So I do not need to be going everywhere so that when you call me, I can stop what I'm doing, minister to you, continue what I'm doing until it's five o'clock in the evening when I have to close the office. So that... These are things that are rare that I'm going to be sharing with you throughout the year about angels. I'm going to go through scripture by scripture. So even if it's going to take us the next one or two years for us to deal with angels alone, we'll deal with them. Because I want you to know as much as possible about angels. Because four kinds of angels are heaven bound. Which are the cherubims, the seraphims, the living creatures that I'll be dealing with tonight. And the archangels, they are more seen in the heavenly realms. But then the last class of angels, what we call common angels, ordinary angels, some of them with wings, some of them without wings. That those ones come more often to the earth. And let me share something why I always say to many of you, to stop panicking and worrying about money and worrying about marriage and problems in life these days. When you start worrying, you tie up your angels. Now let me ask a question before we begin to pray. How many angels is one Christian supposed to have? Let me ask that question. How many angels is one Christian supposed to have? How many angels? Huh? Yeah. Unlimited. No, it's not unlimited. There's a number. No, it's it's not two, but you are you are close, but it's not two. I have one. No. No. Okay. Miss Girl, is that you? Yes. Okay, my lovely one. This is every Christian is supposed to have 6,000 angels. 6,000? Yes. <laughs> Can you lift up your hand and begin to thank God for your angels? Begin to thank God and tell God to release angels tonight. <laughs> begin to thank Him and tell Him, release my 6,000 angels right now. Begin to pray. Six thousand angels is what you are entitled to while you are on earth. Open the door. Yeah. Begin to pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into the meeting tonight and let your angels be loose tonight. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> I told you guys that when 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 the Holy Ghost begin to reveal to you the deep things about the kingdom, you will be shocked. That's why it's good for you to come to these meetings. And by the way, from tomorrow, 
I would like you when you wake up, please make sure you go to the chapel. Make sure there is a new meditation for you and in the chapel on the website on the Decay Mary Ministry website. There is a, a meditation for this week. Please go and read it. Go and meditate on it. Next, by tomorrow morning, there will be some. You go and look at the latest news and events page on the website because there will be new things that will be there for you to know. For example, Lent has started yesterday. So we, we've entered the time of fasting and praying again. So you'll go and take a look at the theme for this uh, before Easter and during Easter, what we'll be dealing with from tomorrow. So you go and take a look at it. But let me tell you something. One angel in the Bible, one angel killed a hundred and eighty five thousand people one angel killed one hundred and eighty five thousand people just one now there are not as many human beings on earth as angels in heaven i hope you guys are aware of that human beings are not as many as angels are. I'm serious. There are so much. So if you think that you are indispensable, then you'll be making the biggest mistake. Because there are so much creatures in heaven that you have no idea. Tonight, I'm going to read to you about the third class of angels. Those who look at the Bible from an intellectual perspective will think that the, the angels I'm going to talk to you about are the cherubims. They are not the cherubims. Now let me explain something about the cherubims, how you know who they are. There are two classes of cherubims. There are the ones with two faces. Those ones have two wings. And then there are the one with four faces. The face of a, a human being, the face of a lion, the face of an ox, the face of an eagle. Those ones, that is one creature with four faces. Those ones do not have legs like human legs. They have straight legs, straight feet, like a calf. And, and those straight feet look like uh, like burnished gleaming burnished bronze okay the ones with four different faces in one single creature those ones have four wings they are they are different so there are two classes of cherubims but tonight we are ministering alongside of another class of angel the third class and these ones are actually called the living creatures. Don't mistake them for the living creatures of Ezekiel. That Ezekiel said those ones are the cherubims in Ezekiel 10. He explained what he was talking about in Ezekiel 1. But the one in Revelation chapter 4, verse number 6, are different. These ones are different. While the cherubims, while the cherubims are the one that holds the throne, the protectors, and the spirit is in their chariots. And their chariots, which Ezekiel explained as wheels, which we know that they are chariots. Of course, cherubims respond to the spirit here we are seeing a different kind of angels never seen before in revelation chapter 4 and some scholars have said that they are the cherub. no they are not so listen to let me begin to read gigi are you on the line with me yes okay gigi i need you to make sure I have a very important announcement for you. 
So make sure you try and get in touch with me tomorrow. Okay. I have a very important announcement for you that will cheer you up. People of God, let me share with you some, um, excuse me, my writing thing fell off. Okay. There are, there, there are some important miracles that has happened. My friend Ruby, um, from India, if you guys could remember, last week, when I was ministering, and I was ministering in the office of a prophet last week, you remember in one of the videos, one of the broadcasts last week, I talked about Ruby and I said that her son, something good was going to happen to the son. I said it last week. And I thought that she is watching because normally she watches all the way in India. She's, she's like when I call a follower of my ministry for life. That's who that woman is. If you feel that God has called you to be a disciple of Jesus with the guy Mary, please let me know by a letter or go to Ada Partners or go to contact us and leave me a message or send me an email and say, I, so, so, and so, this is my address, this is my email. I want to be a disciple or I want to be a covenant partner. Or I just want to be a friend of the ministry. Of, or I want to be part of the special friends of Edekai Mary. Go into our partnership um, page on our website. And you will see where you belong. And let me know. So that I know those who are disciples. Partners with me in this thing. Now, this woman is not just a partner. She's a very special friend to me, personally. She supports my personal life and ministry so for people who are very deeply um associated with what i'm doing and the office they hold what i'm doing to be very holy sacred and they know that they have to support what i'm doing so that it will develop to become something really large to the glory of god and his praise that's who this woman is for those kind of people who are that important to who i am and what i'm doing and to christ in me and to the ministry of the Son in my life, then it's easy for prophecy to come out of me and immediately it happens. Now, while I was saying that last week, that the son of this woman, something good will be happening to her, little did I know that the woman wasn't watching. She was in New Delhi. Now it's called Mumbai. She was in New Delhi. Her son was having an interview. The son finished her master's in business admin and was invited to travel to New Delhi for an interview. And while I was speaking, the son was <coughs> having an interview. And so this woman landed yesterday. Shortly after she came from the airport, she immediately called me. That's why when you watch yesterday's video, you will see why people were praying. You will see me pick the blue phone the blue phone, the 243-2967, and I was saying, who was that? That was Ruby. So after the meeting of last night, because she and I, we are like so many hours difference. So I told her, call me back. So she called after the meeting last night. And I said to her, did you hear the prophecy that came through last week for your son, that something good was going to happen to your son? She said, no, she has not. Then she began to tell me where she was, that she took her son to New Delhi, to Mumbai, for an interview, and the son got the job. Exactly as I was prophesying. Second, my daughter Shantel is to me like a daughter, like she's my real daughter. The one that is a model. I told her last year, I said, this is how your life is going to begin. Number one, last year, 2014, I said to her, is the year of your introduction into the world of fashion and design and modeling and so on. 2015 is the year that you will begin to be in magazine, in television, in movies, in videos, in broadcasts. So at the beginning of the year, 
because this is what normally happens every seven years. A particular demon has learned her weakness. She said and spent time to learn the weaknesses of people. And it wanted to just make her abandon everything and just walk away. And what she was doing in Canada, God was showing me right here because sometimes God zoomed me out to follow each of you. And so, and uh, I began to see her sitting on her bed, leave the bed, go and sit on the chair, walk around just like a crazy woman. And she just wanted to leave everything. She thought there was nothing happening. It's January. So I called her. And I spoke with her. I told her, just calm down. You won't be able to handle 2015. Calm down. Stay on your job. Don't leave your job. And do not worry about your career as a professional model. You won't be able to handle what is going to happen to you. Last week, a prophecy came. I didn't know she didn't hear it. So I asked her to go and listen to what the prophecy says about her. So she went and listened to, I think it's the same broadcast where Ruby's son was talked about. Today she called me and asking me what is happening. Yesterday, she was somewhere in Quebec, in Canada. She's now going to be on product and on magazine of a particular store. Their product, she's the one advertising their product. Now, tomorrow, she will be on her video music clip with a, a Canadian star, a singer, well-known all over the world. The same tomorrow, people whom she talked to since last year. That is why I say to you, if you are involved with me, stay with me. Do not be in a hurry. To rush to look for answers. To rush to look for prayers. God does not answer the prayers, the fasting, and the giving of people who are looking for God everywhere and in everybody. He doesn't. He respect what we call supernatural authority. That is, you coming under the authority and sovereignty of a particular person and stay with that person throughout your lifetime. That's where the blessing is. And when that person said to you, what I am saying to you will come to pass, stay and see it come to pass. The same tomorrow, she's going in for, what do we call it? What she put in last year. They just call her today. So today she had like three calls of one, she's going to be on a magazine again all over, on product, on, on, on movie. I mean, it just, I said, you won't be able to handle 2015. And now she's making arrangements so as to even fit in with what is coming. I mean, it just come, pull, pull, just come, just like a wave. And that's what is going to happen to people like Gigi. That's what's going to happen to many of you. That's what you are going to experience. You are going to experience this kind of favor. I'm not even talking about people who have received their cancellation, money in the in checks, in the mail. So many things just happening that are beyond me. It's, it's amazing. Now, let's look at one thing that I want to share with you is this. Don't worry. Don't panic. You have 6,000 angels following you. It is your prayer. That's what I teach you since last year. If you watch the broadcast, you will see in many of the broadcasts. Your prayer activates angels. I have been teaching that for a long time. Angels will not just come. Until three things happen. Your prayer, not prayer out of panic or sadness or worry. Prayer out of worship. So worship, prayer of the presence laid by the Holy Ghost. 
Next, your ability to speak the word of God constantly, no matter how things are, is going to activate angels. So when I finish dealing with all the good and bad angels, I'm going to go to scripture, verse by verse, word by, and look at where angels appear. And we will explore all of it. So it's going to be a lot broadcast on angels alone this year. Why the Lord wants us to deal with angels in detail is this. Because Christians do not really know much about the forces that are supposed to be with them. Erika and Mary, believers, daily anointing, how can I help you? Who is this? Alex, we are on a conference right now. Yes. Okay, are you all right? Okay, this is what you should do. Call me after the conference, okay? Why don't you join the conference right now? Why don't you join the conference? Good. Join the conference. Let's deal with it right there. Let's go to Revelation chapter 4 and let's begin to read. Gigi, I want you to begin to read from verse number 1, Revelation 4. It doesn't matter what version. Read. You are you are my you are my heavenly reader for my ministry, and you know that. Revelation chapter four from verse one. Please, everybody, listen carefully to this. Okay, let's 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 stop there. Where are you? Is that verse number six? Yes. Okay, let me follow you to verse number six. Now start again on verse number six. Okay, listen. It, it, see what it says around the throne. So see what is happening. Before God's throne, above it, beneath it, around it, are these creatures: the cherubims, the seraphims, and around is four beasts. These beasts are actually called um, creatures. Let me see how it is um, in the in the Greek. And around 
the trunk okay for in fact in the greek is called this is what it is what they are called not based based is uh what version are you reading king james or the international version okay she's reading king james that's an old english which is still good we understand it but this is how the greek the original bible put it four living ones four living ones that's how it is put all oh, it called <laughs> call them animals <laughs> <laughs> that's how it is put to really just tell you they are living ones i like that better four living ones and that's why i call them living creatures because we don't really know who they are but we now know there are four living kind of angels high top notch top class angels these living ones the living creatures they are a cross between they do the function of the seraphims and the cherubims combined in one they do both they are a cross breed of the cherubims and the seraphims and i'm gonna show you why so they are living ones and let me see what boy says um they are repeated that they are full of viewers eyes is called viewers in greek they are full of viewers in front and behind in front and behind that is not how the cherubims are described i just want you to be to know the differences these are different from the living ones called the cherubim these ones are different creatures they are four living ones four living creatures with eyes they are full of eyes the greek says they are uh, replete when the bible says when when the, when the grammar is replete what does it mean full of eyes please read that again um, yes in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures in the midst of the throne where god is are four living creatures are based continue Full of eyes, there are four of them. In front and in back. Continue. Verse 7. The first living creature was like a lion. Okay, listen to this. While in the cherubims, it is one creature that has four faces. Here, is separate creatures separately have just one feature okay read the first one what he has and the first living creature was like what a lion it was like a lion like a lion so this is a different kind of angel it's not a cherubim that has all in one head. This one is like a lion. Read the second one. The second living creature like a calf. Second living creature like a calf or an ox. You see the cherubim. The cherubim has the face of a man, the face of an ox, the face of an eagle, and the face of a lion all in one creature all in one but these ones are separate 
creatures. One is like a lion. The second one is like a calf or an ox. Read about the third one. The third one had the face like a man. Continue. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. Like a flying eagle. They are all different, different ones. So one is like a flying eagle. One has the face of a human being. Another has the face of an ox or a calf. Another one has the face of an eagle. These are separate four different beings, four different entities. But all of them have eyes, full of eyes. Everywhere you turn, there is eyes. Backward, in front. Continue to read, my dear. The four living creatures, each having six wings. Okay, here we go. See? Cherubims do not have six wings. It is the seraphims that has six wings. The seraphims have six wings. Cherubims, if they have four faces, then they have four wings. If they have two faces, according to Ezekiel, there are two kinds of cherubims. Those with two faces have two wings. Those with four faces has four wings. But here, is a different kind of angels, of beings. One, the face of a human. Two, the face of a cow, a calf, one ox. Dot, like a fly eagle. The other one, like a lion. And this is what the Bible says in verse number eight. And the four living creatures had each of them six wings. So each of them has six wings. So they are different. Continue reading, my dear. With four eyes around and within. Okay. And they do not rest day or night. Okay, let's see what their job is. Let's see what their job is. They do not rest day or night. We are going to learn something here. Who they are and what is their job description? And what we have to learn from them? Continue, my dear. Saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Okay, stop there. You see, the seraphims were talking to each other about God. Holy. Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. God Almighty. Heaven is full. The earth is full of your glory. That's the seraphims revealing the revelation of the glory. They address each other. They speak of the three categories, three levels of holiness, and three levels of anointing. They speak of the sovereignty of God. They speak of God as the glory of hosts. It takes you to be in the glory, the glory zone, to see God's holiness. To see him as owner, master of the universe and of all planets. It takes this kind what when you see what the seraphim sees. You begin to aim for the three levels of anointing, three levels of holiness. You begin to see God as owner and yield. And you begin to see God as the one that has hosts. That's what the seraphims reveal. But with these living creatures, each of them has six wings. And each of them is different because of their faces. All of them, they are full of eyes. This is what they are saying. 
This is their job description. They do not rest day and night. They have been activated from the time of their being made. They've been activated. And this is their job. They never cease to say they are night. Ha 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 ha. Let me tell you something here. The living creatures are what we call the power point of sustenance. The power point of sustenance. What do I mean by that? Their job is to extol. Now listen to this. The seraphims reveals the completeness of God. Here, the living creatures reveals the depth of God. The deep things of God in prophecy. Living creatures are prophetic in nature. They reveal the prophetic nature of God, of how things are done in the kingdom, and how things are to be on the earth. As in heaven, so on the earth. So while we are while angels are learning from us, we have a great deal to learn from them. You can never be successful on the earth without angelic ministry on your side. Never. Never. This is what they say. Holy. Holy. Holy, again they reveal the three dimension of God's holiness of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, which we should aim at. The three levels of God's glory. The three levels of the anointing. The three levels of being in the Spirit with the Holy Ghost. The three levels of the supernatural realm with God. They reveal it here. And what actually make God God? His holiness. Which is who he really is. That is his name. Lord God Almighty. So God is El Shaddai. He's Almighty. God is Sovereign. So the one who is almighty is God. The one who is L-O-R-D, capital, is God. See, Lord, begin, God in the center, almighty at the end. Almighty is God. Boss, the Lord owner is God. What are they telling us? If you are going to relate with God, you must relate with him in these three areas. And the one who is, there is nothing to be looked for in heaven and on earth. Because you are dealing with him who the buck stops with him. When he says to your enemy, don't, do you get, let, let, let me let you know this. Do you know that there are certain things about Lucifer that before a demon or Lucifer could come to you or any of his fallen angel could come to you, they have to go to the throne to ask God to allow them to come to you. Do you know that? That's why you shouldn't be afraid. Why? Because they understand this concept. They understand this concept. Of the almightiness 
the lordship of God. God is God because he's Lord. God is God because he's almighty. He's almighty because he's God and Lord. And he's Lord because he's God and almighty. Hallelujah. You must accept God in this three category. And until you accept God as God, and until you accept him as owner, and until you accept him as one with whom the box stops with, it will be difficult for you to have breakthroughs. Let me tell you, I've reached a point where the devil doesn't mean anything to me. I'm serious. Let, let me share an event that happened today. Christine called me, the lady from South Sudan in Seattle, Washington State. The son came home. He's a big, he's a big man now, big, big, big son now. He's having some schizophrenic mental problem going on here and there. And you guys know that real prayer is not spontaneous. Real prayer is spontaneous on target if they are Holy Ghost led prayers. If you will only stop and ask the Holy Ghost to lead you to pray, according to Ephesians 6, towards the last verses, you will be a very successful person. We pray so as to make power available. When you pray and get power, now you use that power to solve problems. You don't just go to play when you go to pray. You go to get power from the king and then bring it down to the earth and solve problems in the supernatural, in the mind and in the physical. And I began to, when she was talking to me, I told her to stop. I said, let me ask the Holy Ghost for direction here. This happened this morning. So I said to the Holy Ghost, what am I to do here? How, how do we solve this problem? And instantly the Holy Spirit said to me, ask her where her son was born and ask her what was done with his umbilical cord. What did they do with his umbilical cord when he was born? Ask the mother. I'm like, what has it got to do with solving a problem? I'm asking myself, I'm asking myself this question. But I say, well, I will follow the lead of the Holy Ghost. Now I asked the mom, I said, I said, I'm gonna ask her the first question, and then I'm gonna ease into the second question to see whether she's comfortable with it. So I asked, I said, I said, Christine, where did you deliver your baby? Where was this boy born? Oh, she said, Khartoum in north sudan i said okay and i wanted to ask the next question she she got me off she said when this baby was born listen to this when this baby was born my aunt took this baby on blinkle card opened the ground in the backyard of our house where we used to live put it in the ground put some seed and planted something in it and waited for three days and the crop did not germinate she panicked. On the fourth day, the plant began to come out. And I said to her, did you know what, the, what that means? She said, no. I said, that is witchcraft. I said to her, the mental problem, the mental situation that your son is going through is because of what was done, the witchcraft that was done on your son. Immediately he came out of the valley. See, this is a common practice among some cultures. When a baby is born, they will take something from the woman, all the things that came out of the woman, and they will take the baby's umbilical cord, and they will perform some very strong, very strong witchcraft, very strong voodoo. And they will bury it. In some family, they bury all the things under a particular tree. Even if you were born in America or Germany or England or anywhere you are born in the world, they will always dry those things and transport them back to where they were, where they originally come from. And somebody in that family will bury it where everyone else is buried. 
tying everybody in a covenant together. I want you to understand that I know these things. In fact, when I was talking with my partner in ministry, Christine of Canada, today, she said, I understand those things too. I said, good. It's good that you know. And I said to the mother of this kid, I said, the Holy Ghost is right now in Khartoum, where the baby was born, and has gone to exactly where that thing was buried. And the Holy Spirit is doing something in that place right now. And that your son has been returned back to Nabalsi. You see, this is how this thing goes. Either a deliverance happened and the revelation happened, or the revelation happened and the deliverance happened. So her own was that a discernment of spirit happened, a revelation happened about what is happening to her son. And then the deliverance came. So I want you to be aware of one thing. Do not think that the Holy Spirit doesn't know the foundation or the root cause of your problem. He knows and he will tell me or he will go into deliverance and reveal it later or he will reveal it and then do the deliverance. And this thing has been following the son. What was done, what was spoken. Let's go back to the angels here. This is what they are saying. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Now tell me to whom this is applied. It's about God's kingdom in his fullness that has already come through Jesus and is still going to come with the second coming. This is about Jesus. So these are the angels closely affiliated with Jesus. Are you guys listening? These are the angels who are closely associated with the prophetic ministry of heaven. They reveal prophecy. They are the angels of prophecy. See what they are saying? The Lord God is a holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come about Jesus of Nazareth. Is Jesus that you hear among the Godhead? Is Jesus you that you hear that they speak about that He is coming back again? He is the one who was God, who is God, who will always be God. He is the Son of God that is coming back again. Now, not as the Son of Man or the Son of God, but still as Son of Man, as Son of God, but as God, King of Kings. And Lord of Lord, these are the living creatures that reveals the prophetic ministries of heaven. What are we learning here? When you are in deep worship, prophecies begin to come. Look at why was David called a prophet? It was because while he was worshipping, writing his songs for God, writing his prayers to God, and singing them, the Spirit came upon him. And he began to speak about his son that was to come, that is Jesus. In worship, you activate this kind of angelic realm. You begin to access deep angelic realm through deep penetrating what we call presence worship. Gigi, write that down. Presence worship. When you begin to do presence worship, that is worshiping in the presence of the throne. Hallelujah. You begin to encounter this kind of angels. Hallelujah. Can I share something with you? 
I do not want any of you ever to live by yourself anymore. From tonight onward, I want you to know that your enemies do not stand a chance. They do not stand a chance. Your enemies are in big trouble from tonight. I want to hear you shout hallelujah wherever you are. Shout hallelujah. Not only that, any problem in your life do not stand is in trouble. Any trouble that came into your life is in trouble. Please write that down. Any trouble that came into your life is in trouble. I want you to say, every problem that has come into my life, you are now in trouble. Begin to say it. Now, I want you to say, every enemy of mine is now in trouble. Now read verse number 9, and I think we will stop there. Whenever the living creature gives glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders come down before him, who sits on the throne and worship him, who lives forever and ever. Okay. You see, there are things happening here. The Father is being worshipped, and Jesus is being worshipped, and the Holy Ghost is being worshipped at the same time. Listen to this. There is something else we are learning about the living creatures. They are the high worship, prophetic worship. What we need in our generation is prophetic worship. Prophetic worship. Prophetic worship that will make, that will shake the forces of heaven, earth, and hell itself. That will shake the earth, that will shake the heavens. See what they do. When these living creatures, what do they do? He says, when they give, so their job is to give thanks. They give glory, honor, and thanks. These are the three major ingredients of worship, of prophetic worship, high worship, presence worship. Please Gigi, make sure you are taking note of these things tonight. The three ingredients of presence, worship, prophetic worship is giving thanks, giving honor, and giving glory to God. Do you hear here when they come to cry? Or they come here to panic and worry about their next meal? If all you're worrying about is how to pay bills, then you, you, I don't know how you are going to make it in life. If all you are worrying is about how to get married and stay married, then you are in big trouble. If all you are worrying about is about your child, your children, your husband, then you are in big trouble. Because there are higher dimension of life than this, which is prophetic worship and presence worship of glory, honor, and giving thanks. When worship happens this way, like the living, like the four living creatures do continually, day and night, for who knows how many trillions of years, God shows himself as Lord God 
Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come in your life. Which means, He will be the God of your yesterday. That is, was. He will be the God of your today. That is, is, uh, that is, um, is. And He will be the God of tomorrow and of your destiny and future. That is to come. You have no worry. When God becomes for you, Lord God Almighty, you shouldn't have any worry in life. <laughs> Glory, honor, and thanks. And who do they give it to? To him that sat on the throne is not about you. It's not about your problem. It's not about your sickness. It's about giving honor, thanks, and glory to him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. See what they do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Forever and ever. See what happened. When they do that, the 24, the 4 and 20 elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne. When presence and prophetic worship happens, it makes heaven to bow and worship. For example, what we are doing right now, the angels are watching, the saints in heaven are watching. It makes them to worship. It makes them to worship. Your job is to be in the presence of God and worship Him in such a way that it makes angels the sense to worship. Your influence should make people to seek God. Hmm. And this is what they say. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast uh, for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created so why do you think that your enemy can defeat you when each of those people maybe if they are affiliated with Lucifer they have like one or two demons working with them and you are talking about 6,000 angels working with you. Tonight, you receive a new revelation about who you really you are. One angel can slay 185,000 people. Just one angel. Yeah. Just one angel. Is that the end of that reading? Okay, I want you to think very seriously about what you've learned tonight. Angels are going to begin to work for you when you stop when you stop worrying. Tonight I'm gonna share with you what God said I should tell you before I get off this broadcast. The greatest reason. You are constantly defeated. Is because you have constantly allowed the spirit of discouragement to creep into your life. God is limited, or God is unlimited by how you respond. You respond to events around you. Devils are bound or released according to what you're saying and how you respond to things around you. 
when you begin to say positive things, you begin to speak scriptures of power, God begins to speak on your behalf. Angels begin to walk on your behalf. Let me share something with you. When we finish dealing with angels, I will show you some of their characteristics. Because sometimes what you say will make an angel to slay you. Angels could kill you. They can turn against you in a second because of what you say. Or because of how you think. You see, every February 15, every February 15, I always, the enemy always liked to lock me up in a dark cave. Because that was the day that my father died of heart attack. He died suddenly. I wasn't home. I never saw his body when they, until they buried him. Because he, they make sure that I don't see him because my father and I, we are very close. So whenever that day comes, I am locked into a cave. And then God said to me, on the day your father, I call, I recall him home, because my father was born again. He saw, before he left the earth, he saw to it that he told me everything God told him about me and who I was going to be. And he warned me. This is what he warned me before. All the elders of my family on both sides, he warned me before all of them. He said this. None of you should ever allow my son to ever become a soldier or a lawyer. Because those are the two things he would like to go and study and become. He wants to retire as the chief judge to a country house with cows and horses. He's told me about it. Or he will want to retire as a major general in the army, as a general in the army. He's the type of son that I know will plan a coup and topple government and take over. They might kill him in the process, so don't, don't let him go. He's very brilliant. He can execute things. I know him. But this is what I know that heaven has told me about him. He is a shepherd. He's a pastor. Do not allow him to ever take up any job while he is on earth. That's what my father told his people. Don't ever allow him to take up any job anywhere. Because if he takes it up, he will never succeed in it. Because his destiny is to be a shepherd of many people and in many nations. If you look for me today, you don't find me. I have told you about him. And I've also handed all of you and everything I have, and everything in this family into his hand. Hallelujah. I was 14 years old, and elderly people were handed over to me. Land, everything. 14 years old, I'm the second son, not the first son. And he made sure he did it when, when my senior brother wasn't there. He made sure that he took me on a journey all by himself and myself alone. And he made sure he took me to his senior brother who was a witch doctor and told him, no, he's not following your footsteps. He's following mine. They quarrel over me. Big time. I was in the living room listening to my father and his senior brother quarreling over me. His senior brother told him that I should follow in his footsteps as a witch doctor. And I said, diviner, because I'm already seeing into the spirit world. My father said, I know that my son sees into the spirit world. When he says something, it happened. But he's not following your way. He's following this way. Big two differences. And I remember when I'm coming home on, on summer vacation, and my father's brother will send people to tell me not to come to his home. Yeah, he will tell me not to come to his home. The reason, if I go there, what is following me will destroy everything in his shrine. He knew it. You guys have heard the story of the two men that took my picture, printed my picture out of the internet and took it to a witch doctor. You guys have heard that story? 
they entered into the witch doctor's house and they 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 told the witch doctor that they are coming to for him to check out the guy Mary for them. So the witch doctor said, Who is he? Who is this name? Do you have his picture? They said, Yes, they do. Say, bring it out. And the man drew a circle, a white circle, which the witches, the witch doctors do, they drew a, uh, this thing, a circle. They put the picture in this in the midst of the circle. So they put my picture. Immediately they brought my picture and put it in the circle. A big A, a wave. Enter the house and things began to leave the house. The supernatural dog fled first, the python fled, the mermaid, the water spirit fled, the spear fled. Things began, and these two men were like, What is going on here? It's like the house is about to fall on them. And the witch doctor ran into his bedroom and brought out his gun and machetes and chased them. And they grabbed my picture and they fled. He said, I'm going to cut your two heads off. Why do you bring a man from a different planet to into this shrine? The witch doctor changed them. The entire village came out and said, Baba, please, we beg you. What is happening? He said, are you begging me? What is happening? Do you know how many years it has taken me for me to bring all these gods and goddesses into this place? And this guy has destroyed my source of livelihood. They brought a man from a different planet into this place, a son of the gods. His name is out. They said, but Baba, we didn't know about this guy. We don't know. We just asked you to check him out for us who this man is. He said, listen, I don't care who told you, but you shouldn't have brought him. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse. They have to bring their heads to be cut off, to be sacrificed, to bring those things back. Those guys fled, they entered their jeep, their SUVs and fled. You don't know what is following you. You have no idea. That's why this story is being told. You don't have an idea of the power that is following you. Until you encounter something so big, then you say, oh my gosh, I didn't know that I'm this powerful. Lift up your hand wherever you are. Begin to pray for angels to begin to follow you. 6,000 angels to come into your life and to begin to follow you wherever you go. Begin to pray and give honor to God. Take like one minute. After one minute, stop so that I can pray and we can leave this place. Begin to pray. Lift up your hand. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Hallelujah. There are so many things you need. Begin to pray and call them to come. Amen. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Begin to thank God for the angels. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers tonight. Thank you, Lord, for exposing the lifestyles of angels to us so that we can be. We can. Lord, I ask that you activate everyone who watches this broadcast. Activate them tonight. 
activate their life, activate their money, activate their destiny, activate their fortune, activate everything about them. Activate the blessing is to that. The people of God, many of you, this year, you think that this year is slow. But this is your year of greatest miracle. I want you to lift up your hand and begin to say, God, thank you. This is my year of multiple miracles. This is my year that I've ever, that I've, I have never received money. I have never received fortune. I have never received favor. I have never received houses. I have never received the gift of the Spirit. I have never been in prayer like or fasting like I am now. This is my greatest year. This is my greatest year of power. What you will achieve this year, you have never achieved. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Now let me share something with you. Whether you believe it or not, I believe it. I don't have nothing to lose for believing it. Because it's working for me. I will make more money this year than I've ever made all of my life. The reason is, Amen. listen to what I'm telling you. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you. I will receive more cars. I will receive more gifts. I will receive more revelation from heaven. I will receive more power from heaven than I've ever received all my life this year. I'm serious. This is, this is not a game here. This is, this is about life. Everyone who follows me because I follow Jesus will also, this is your greatest year. And next year it will be increased seven times more. Because you are not going backward. You are going forward. So if you, are, if you are following me and you find yourself going backward, check and see where, whether you believe the gospel that I'm preaching to you. Or whether you are running around listening to other people. Whether you are putting it into practice. Go, go and think about it. Because this is your year of coming out into the blessing. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. So that he has delivered us into the blessing of Abraham and into the ministries of angels. That's what he has done. People of God, while you see the, the, the ministry I'm doing about angels, sometimes a little bit longer is because I'm not repeating them. I'm going to take them just as they are. As they are. I'm not repeating anything. Except God showed me some other little thing, embellishment, then I'll have a smaller video that I will just put those embellishments there and I said, these are standard videos. I'm not repeating them. I don't have time for that. So tonight, we are done with the living creatures. Maybe later, somehow, somewhere, God will show me more things, then I will make a little bit clip, and then I will put it there. But this is done. Tomorrow, we are going to the archangels. Ha <laughs> ha! That's gonna be fun. That's gonna be fun! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tomorrow. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, tell your brothers, sisters, family members, friends, we are talking about the archangels. For the first time, you are going to know that they are archangels. Archangels are what we call ruling angels. The rulers. They are rulers. Some people believe that they are just four archangels. That they were Lucifer. Son of the morning, um, Michael, Gabriel, some talk about Raphael. I don't know. No, no, no. I believe this is what I feel so strong as I look at scriptures. There are so many archangels. They are more than most of what you are seeing in scripture is a description of what the writer was looking at. There are more. That's what I can say. That's why those who say Lucifer was the greatest angel ever made, I disagree. I do. I disagree. 
I disagree completely. I do not believe that Lucifer had more power than all the angels of God. If he did, why then did Michael throw him out? Because it wasn't Jesus that threw Lucifer out. It was Michael and his own angels. And the angels that follows Michael. It was not even the cherubims that fought Lucifer. It was the archangels. Think about that. God has given me insight into the depth of heaven and the earth. Michael threw him out. And we will see it tomorrow. So don't, don't come people trying to tell how powerful Lucifer is. Hey, 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 and you are so scared. I'm so... Oh, no. No, 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 no. I know Jesus. The power of Jesus. We are not even talking about the power of Jesus. Because everything will come to an end if Jesus lift up his hand. If the cherubim, just one of them going to war, that's the end of Lucifer. Or the living creatures. If one of them goes into war. So don't, don't try to make one idiot as though he's greater than he's, he's greater than what is there. Just one. And that is what human beings as well. Afraid of. They are panicking. They are worrying. Oh, don't talk too much because the devil will be listening to you. <laughs> and and there are people, there are people everywhere they turn, they see Lucifer everywhere. And though Lucifer is unlimited. Let me tell you, Lucifer is limited. He is limited. Very limited. It's not. It's not everywhere. Please hear me. It's not everywhere. But God is everywhere. God is everywhere. Please listen. Lucifer doesn't know everything about you, but God knows everything about you. Yes. So by the time we are done with the angels. You will know what I'm saying tonight. And the reason why God wants me to focus on angel this year, we have to know our privileges in the kingdom. And angels are our privileges. It's one of the greatest, some of the big gifts we receive from God is the ministries of angels. And the greatest gift angels have received is the ministry of the saints. We learn about God from angels, and angels learn about God from us. Please, I want to ask angels tonight. Father, release billions of angels into the entire world tonight on my behalf and on behalf of your people. I have this with all humility. I give you honor. I give you thanks. I give you glory for who you are. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. You are the Lord God Almighty. God Almighty. Release billions of angels into the universe on my behalf. I am giving, I and your people, we give you Europe as a gift. We give you Asia as a gift. I and the saints will give you Africa as a gift. The Caribbean, the Indian Ocean, the South Pacific, we hand it over to you as a gift. We give you all of Europe. We give you all of the Middle East, North America, all of United States, Canada, Mexico, all of England. We give you all of the Americas as a gift. Receive it, Lord. And all that is in it, the beautiful things in it, and the people in it, release angels to bring me people. Since angels are not allowed to preach the gospel, let them bring me the billions in the face of the planet so that they will hear the gospel from my mouth. Release to me billions.
millions of people. Let the angels bring me givers so that the gospel will be preached with the visitation of the Holy Ghost, with the manifestation of the Spirit, and the demonstration of the kingdom on the earth. That people will be born again, delivered from demonic possession, from sickness and troubles of life, and discouragement, ha <laughs> ha, and they will be filled with the Holy Ghost. And their prayer and worship life will return their fortune and favors and their blessing activated. Tonight, Lord send out angels to the four corners of the earth to bring me a harvest into the kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. And the people of God says, Amen. Amen. If you have not given your January or February uh, gift to the ministry for the preaching of the gospel, please go to our donation or our partnership page on www.idikaimeriministry.com and please do give generously. God bless you. And I will see you tomorrow. And we will start ministering about the archangels by God's grace tomorrow. After the archangels, we will now begin to minister about the common angels. And after that, now I will begin to teach. After applying the blood, I will begin to minister about the fallen angels. And after that, I will begin to go through scripture piece by piece until we reach the book of Revelation about angels. God bless you and keep you. You will see miracles. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Good night. Amen. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome.